Hello and welcome back and today's my hardware review of the brand new QNAP 2.5 GBE switch, the QSW11055 T. Now a number of you when you first heard about this switch were a little confused, understandably. You were wondering one, why a 2.5 GBE switch? It seems like a very small upgrade over that of one GBE switches like the Netgear that we've talked about before and ultimately is it worth your money? Because Arriving at around 100 to 110 pounds, this five port unmanaged 2.5 GBE switch isn't the sexiest or most exciting switch on the market. We've already filmed our unboxing, which is hopefully already live, but the switch itself isn't one that makes many big promises. It can't, it's an, un, you know, an unmanaged um, switch with five ports on it. There's no PoE to speak of, there's no switch management, there's no link aggregation or port trunking. And it's got um, loop detection, which is always handy, but on a five port switch, that's not much of a problem, I think, in the grand scheme of things. And in today's hardware review, we want to really address three solid things. One, is it a good switch? Okay, so that's really, really important. The second thing is, should you consider this over a one GPU switch? And the third one is, does this give you enough? Because that, to me, is probably the most important question in the whole thing because 2.5 GBE uh, is appearing more and more in network attached storage it's not just QNAP a number of brands have embraced 2.5 GBE in their network attached, uh, attached architecture and we've also seen thanks to the rise of Wi-Fi 6 a number of um, router man uh, router providers and internet service providers uh, you know um, Netgear, uh, Fritz, Asus and of course QNAP in their Q Horror series embracing and releasing routers that have greater than one GBE LAN ports on them. So with that in mind, and particularly the ones with 2.5 GBE as standard, this uh, switch is quite desirable. A number of us, when we get our internet service provider routers, or even if you buy one, you may find that they've only got four LAN ports and you end up, you know, maybe it's four LANs and a WAN port, or worse still, it'll be four LANs and one of them's used as your WAN, so that's your internet service provider. Then you've got three left, and then you connect your NAS, and then you've got two left, and then you go, oh, I've only got two left. Oh, I better connect my PlayStation or Xbox, because I want the best speed there. Wallop, you're down to one port. And then you go, right, well, I like to game on my PC, and I don't want to rely on Wi-Fi for that. Crap, that's all my ports gone. So... The desirability of switches as something more than we what we find in offices has grown a lot over recent years and now a number of even low-end home users introduce switches into their network environment as soon as they start introducing working from home, introducing cameras in the home, introducing um, uh, gaming consoles and PC gaming rigs, or if they edit things on the fly, the idea of a switch in the home is very, very understandable now. We're not seeing routers with eight ports anytime soon, so this is your next best option. So in, in those terms, this is a very, very, very good solution. It's compact, um, it is a combined solution. You've got the external power brick there, very small power brick. I believe it's a 12 watt um, external PSU there that connects with that cable. Um, you've got uh, rubberized feet there if you choose. You can even wall mount this switch if you like. And then on top of that, you've also got the quick start installation guide and information on your warranty there. And if you look at the switch up close, it is very, very small. It's very, very light. As mentioned, it can be wall mounted. Um, it's got plenty of ventilation all the way through there. Look how transparent that is. There is a heat sink over the main controller inside, but again, unmanaged, so you can't interact with it. We've got the four LAN ports, each with dual LED that will denote connection and um, uh, the bandwidth of the connected device. It does support one gpe there as well not just the 2.5 so it's scalable we have got a little area there for leds for uh, when the device is powered on network traffic and of course uh, if there's issues such as that loop detection mentioned um, the leds have a multi-color spectrum again that will give you more information about the connection and anyone that's ever used any kind of network switch will be very familiar with that and it is very very solid it's silent there's no fan inside it's got heat sinks to take care of everything and each port is 2.5 GBE. So it is a good solution. I'll definitely give them that. And they're one of the few companies out there that have produced a 2.5 GBE solution with most companies settling on 1G solutions or 10G and 1G combo solutions or straight into 10 GBE. So they have produced a very unique product here to market. And although it's unmanaged, 
that price tag is a bit of a barrier for me, it has to be said, because 100 odd nicker for a five port switch seems a little high. Uh, given it's unmanaged, given that it's not power over ethernet PoE, I think it could stand to be a little lower. I think it's a very, very, very good product and they are pricing it up based on its uniqueness. But that leads us into our second, port, uh, our second point quite diligently and that is comparing it to a 1G solution. Now, 1G 5 port um, switches like this one underneath me, this is the Netgear GS105. This is an unmanaged switch. So again, both neither one of these two support link aggregation or port trunking. Neither one of them have got port prioritization. Neither one of them have got um, any kind of bandwidth control where you can say that, you know, limitations on different connections, although you can set them on the client devices, that's not ideal. Um, neither one of them uh, provide a lot of the software services side of things, but this one arrives at about 25 or 30 quid, which is a quarter of the cost of this realistically. So, you know, this leads us on to the point of if you're going to buy your first network switch for home or upgrading an existing switch, what is it that will make you jump to this one? And indeed, should you? Well, first and foremost, each one of those ports, you know, delivers around 250 megs total top end connection if it's connected to a 2.5 GBE device. That means 12.5 gigabit Ethernet uh, total connectivity possible on this across the bandwidths. And again, you know, 1,250 meg potential. This on the other hand, delivers five 1 GBEs, each one with around 100 megs each, which means up to 500. So again, more than double the bandwidth connectivity on this possible on those supported devices. And that's the key word, supported devices because if you plan on scaling up your devices later this is a bloody good bet because it's giving you a, a higher glass ceiling whereas this one you're buying something that arrives with a limitation if you've got a NAS in your environment that has 2.5 GBE and the majority of solutions that have been released from you know the NAS brands this year and again QNAP, Acer Store, Buffalo, not Synology though all of those um, NAS storage providers have released solutions, the majority of which are 2.5 GBE. And if you connect one 2.5 GBE NAS to one of these ports, even if everyone else only has 1G connections, they're all going to be able to get 50 to 60 megs each simultaneously. Independently, they're all going to max out. But if they all connected at the same time, they're going to get up to 50 or 60 megs each. Whereas on this one, if you connect a 2.5 GBE NAS to this, you're immediately restricted to 1G, which may, again means 100 megs, which means those other users at full connection are only going to get 25 GBE each, or one user will get up to 100 megs. So there's a much higher bandwidth potential uh, and speed possible with this for individual users, whether you utilize only one 2.5 GBE device or more. Also, with a lot of internet service providers now starting to roll out um, solutions that are 2.5 GBE enabled or their Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E next year enabled routers that also have LAN ports at 2.5 GBE because they need that connection to be um, kind of um, synchronized across the whole device. Again, this is another area, this switch becomes very, very desirable. And it's another area where if you buy this, it's a short term solution because it arrives in 2020 with a glass ceiling. And if that seems like a problem to you or any of the points that I've said apply to you, then chances are buying this is a very, very bad move. There is of course a middle ground. If you buy a managed one GBE switch, they're gonna retail for about 40 to 50 quid in the middle. And that gives you the ability to link aggregate, but you're still gonna need the other devices to have that level of link aggregation supported. And it's a bit techy and not perfect so do bear that in mind um is the qnap perfect of course it isn't there are reasons why you might not want to go for it which leads us neatly in to the third point but i'm going to keep that there because it will be useful later on now i like the build quality of this i really do i think it's very very rugged i like that it is one of the only 2.5 gb uh, switch solutions out there i like the fact that it can be wall mounted I like the fact that if you mount it up there, it's really nice, that brushed metal all the way around. I love the cooling on this device. It is silent. Weirdly, uh, the Netgear, we do have 
a GS105 over there in the corner, the managed version, it emits the tiniest hum. It's really, really low, and you've got to get close to, to notice it, but if you're in a mic'd environment, that will get picked up. This is genuinely silent, which again, is very, very ben beneficial to it. Um, I like uh, the QNAP range of solutions out there, and I'm sure they're going to release um, a managed version of this in due course. Um, but as I say, it's not perfect. Things that I don't like about it. Uh, number one, I don't like the marketing around loop detection on such a small switch. It's not actually that vital. It's much, much more useful on a larger switch. It's handy, but you're not going to have much loop detection on a 5.4, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, the second thing I'm not overly keen on, and this is very much a personal preference, and I know a number of you aren't really going to agree with me, depending on how you deploy it. Um, if it's wall mounted, you're going to have that there. And on the base, you've got the five lands that are going to be running down. Uh, it might be ceiling mounted or corner mounted. And you're going to have the PSU connected there to the base of the device. Running down the wall. Simple as that. But what about if you desk deploy this. You have it on the desk there and you have the LAN port out there to the devices. Maybe it's under the desks, maybe it's central to the desk. My point is, you want to be able to see those LAN ports. You want to see those lights so you know there's activity and you know when something's connected to assess any network problems. Ultimately you want these to be visible. The problem is, that means this power cable on the front is bent. Because chances are, if you're facing those ports, that means the power cable is over here by the wall, which means that power cable is going to be bent round, which I'm not overly keen on. Now, a lot of other providers, and again, these guys, are, you know, the Netgear does it, the power connector is on the rear of that device. If you look at it on the front there, all four, uh, all five ports are there on the front, and the power connector is on the rear. That's where I would expect that. And I know it's a very, very minor complaint, but I don't like the fact that that has the power port there on the front. I think. If it was wall mounted, a rear mounted port would be just as fine. My last complaint, again, it's more about the fact that the warranty, depending on different router switches in their environment, it's about two or three years, depending on which one you go for. The Netgear Unmanaged Solutions have an unlimited lifetime warranty. These don't, and that really surprises me. And I get why, because QNAP doesn't have the huge pedigree the Netgear have in their switches, although they're doing a lot better. They've got a large range of devices, and I wouldn't be surprised if this arrives with a lifetime warranty soon. If not, that they would still honor that. It doesn't need it, these switches. It takes a lot to break them. Take my word for it. We've really pushed some of these switches to the brink. But those are really my complaints. The, the lack of lifetime warranty, uh, that power co the power connector there on the front, and again, that's a preference point. And the fact that there isn't a managed alternative to this, but those are very, very minor points for what you are getting. And ultimately, if you are looking for a 2.5 GPU switch or you are on a tight budget where 10G, which starts at around 250 quid for some of those combo switches, seems uh, ooh, way out of uh, your reach, this is a lovely alternative. And if you are embracing greater than gigabit speeds in your network environment or the router from your internet service provider, or personal private purchase has got 2.5 GBE, you should definitely consider this switch because for what it is, it is the best of its kind out there, but it's just a question of whether this is too small an upgrade overall and you should just make the jump to 10G. If you do want to look at 10G solutions, QNAP have a number of those in the QSW series, the 308 and the M408, great, very affordable 10G solutions that start at about 200 quid they're definitely worth a look. But if 10G seems light years away, lovely solution right there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know by clicking like, click subscribe to learn more, and visit the link in the description, both to NAS Compares to learn more about this device and its alternatives, as well as visiting span.com for the perfect network attached story solutions. They provide pre and post sales tech support, worldwide shipping. They even include the power cable that you need. They're the right guys to go to. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.